Hey guys, T Glizzy here, and in today's Destiny 2 video, we're going to be going over how to complete the Pit of Heresy flawlessly with ease. So this is going to earn yourself the very exclusive emblem that only 0.6% of the player base have. So it's definitely one of the most rare emblems in the game at the moment. So one thing I wanted to clear up is what is the easiest class to actually complete the Pit of Heresy flawlessly on? And I tried it on all three accounts, Titan, Warlock, and also the Hunter, and the Hunter seemed to be the easiest class to actually Actually do it flawlessly I completed it solo on the other two but it seemed to be much more challenging so I definitely recommend doing it on the hunter this guide is gonna be centered around the hunter build because like I said it just seems way more easier to actually do it on the hunter so we are gonna be doing it around the hunter build and actually going over how to actually complete it on the hunter because it was just so flawlessly easy and so many less mistakes that could you know potentially happen so without further ado let's dive straight into it so taking a look at our build this is gonna be our build for encounter one through four so we're gonna be using the bottom tree night stalker this is gonna give us our smoke bombs our smoke bombs are actually gonna make us go invisible so those are super super awesome and then we're gonna be using gamblers dodge so when we dodge near an enemy we actually get our smoke bomb back and then we're gonna be pairing this up with the six coyote exotic because this is gonna give us double dodge meaning we'll always have two smoke grenades so two chances to go invisible and then also the smoke grenade has been buffed so it actually went from eight to nine seconds so the extension feels really really long when you're under invisible so it's really really nice so it feels really good to be getting out of scenarios that are very sticky so definitely recommend going with the six coyote in the bottom tree night stalker build and then we're going to be using the izanagi for the first encounter through number four also pairing that out with the recluse and that's going to be going through encounter one through four and then we're also going to be using the edgewise or the 21 delirium it's up to you personally i do enjoy the edgewise it is just a much better feeling gun in my opinion but if you do only have 21 delirium then that also does work also and our gear is going to take account heavily on how we can flawlessly this it's going to make our gameplay and just make each encounter so much more easier if we make sure we have our recovery spec between 9 and 10 so you want to have either 90 or 100 recovery this is going to benefit you greatly on your gameplay and Anytime you are in the red zone you are gonna be getting your life back almost immediately so it really does help you know just save you in a lot of scenarios so definitely recommend always running a hundred recovery all of the other uh, stat builds aren't you know as important as recovery is so definitely recommend that for PvE and also PvP gameplay so once you gain your first sword from the a symbol now you want to work your way left to right and you want to start off with the left two buildings these have a chance to house at least one disciple on the left hand side and once you check those two buildings then you just want to work on the right handed buildings and just take it very very slow if this is your first time trying to do this encounter or this dungeon then i do recommend actually taking a look at like rick Cacus's video or something like that for a guide because this is going to be just tips in actually how to actually complete some of these encounters and not with the base instructions on how to actually get through them these are just going to be tips and ways how to actually get through each encounter i just want to clear that up if you were looking for like a direct just you know simple non-flawless guide we are going to be just going for flawless inside of this guide but once you do go ahead and check those buildings out now you want to just you know play it very safe and make sure you use your cloak for each time you do enter each building just play it very safe and make sure you stay alive for this part of the encounter encounter because this is one of the more easier parts and this is gonna set the you know board if you are ready to do it flawlessly so you just want to take this very very slow and uh, you know each room at a time and don't forget there is no time limit you have unlimited time to actually complete this so for encounter two we're actually going to be using the orb duplication cheese so if you want to completely avoid that then you know be my guest but we are looking for the easiest possible way to complete this and we are going to be cheesing just a, a little bit here so what we're going to be doing is uh, duplicating the orb at each of the stations so we can completely avoid actually entering each of the tunnels just avoiding unnecessary deaths that we really don't need and giving us a very fast and crisp time through the ogre arena so first off what we're gonna want to do is uh, go over to a bank and while we're depositing our orb when we're around 70% through the deposit then we're gonna want to switch weapons this is actually gonna duplicate the orb so we can actually just repick it back up and go to another bank and completely deposit it again it's very simple to do and it's just gonna make sure make sure we have a very clean run 
So the strategy I went with for this encounter was to enter hallway one. This is the hallway that you see directly in front of you as soon as you jump into the arena. So you wanna enter this tunnel here and then take out the knight inside of there and obtain your orb. And then this is where you're gonna wanna head over to hallway three. Hallway three is gonna be the hallway all the way over to the left. Hallway one is gonna be the hallway right as you jump into the arena over to your right. And then the in-between hallway in between three and one is gonna be hallway two. So hallway two's ogre is very very aggressive and he actually won't let you deposit your moat without standing right next to the bank so it is a very dangerous thing to do so you leave hallway two for the very end this is going to be a huge truth factor on making sure you just don't die inside of this encounter so once you have obtained your first orb now you want to head over to hallway three and deposit that orb and then from there you want to make your way back around over to hallway one you're just going to want to skate and use your invisibility around Around the ogre and then skate your way all the way over to hallway one and then this is where you're going to want to deposit the orb for hallway one make sure you do play it very safe with the ogre they are very very tanky or not very tanky they actually kill you in just a few shots and they are immune to complete damage so there's no way to actually kill them from there you want to take the orb from hallway uh, one over to hallway two and then play it very safe and cloak around the ogre and deposit your orb into hallway two this is going to give you the completion of the encounter so it doesn't really matter where the ogre is you can just run into the next encounter and then crouch around the room and then now you are on encounter three so it's very very simple to do guys and it's very fast and safe making sure you can just avoid any unnecessary deaths so yet again we're going to be taking advantage of the orb duplication cheese and we are going to be cheesing the orb so first thing we want to do is start the encounter by planting a raid banner making sure our ammo and our smoke bombs and everything are just ready to go and we want to start off by clearing all of the ads in the room and leaving the center ads so the ads that spawn where you put the uh, raid banner down it doesn't really matter about those ads they're far away enough to you know not be able to hurt you so you want to take out the ads on the right and the left once you clear those ads out now it's time to actually take down the knight and obtain yourself the orb from here you want to actually deposit two of these orbs before you actually use your first cloak this is going to ensure that you have a very clean run and that you only need four cloaks you actually get three cloaks automatically so you're only having to wait on one cloak so this is going to ensure that you have a very safe run because there are going to be a lot of boomers shooting at you during this encounter so what I did to assure maximum safety was each time that I would use my cloak would be each time I would dunk one orb and then duplicate it. So each time you use your cloak, go ahead and dunk one of the orbs and then you'll just have to do this four times and then the encounter is over with. So just make sure you are safe. You don't have to be standing directly on the totem. You just have to make sure you are on that platform up there and just make sure you are somewhere near the totem and then it won't go in rage. So it's very simple to do and this should take you around one one minute to do so it's not too long of an encounter and this is definitely one of the easier parts of this entire dungeon so now for the encounter the heroes so this is encounter four so now you are three out of five you're almost done with the entire dungeon and you are almost flawless so you're so close to that beautiful emblem so now for the heroes i am going to link a map inside of the description this is the map that i use to actually complete this encounter it really really does help and it just makes it so much easier to you know guide your way through it and find your symbols that you actually need to locate down so first off as soon as you jump into this encounter encounter check your symbols out make sure to take a picture with your phone make sure you take a screenshot on your ps4 do what you have to do to remember those symbols so you can find your three symbols very easily so next you want to pull up this map here and you just want to look at the map and find where your three symbols are actually going to be located because like i said this place is a labyrinth it's very complex and there are a lot of turns that you don't want to take and there are a lot of things you want to avoid so you want to avoid going through any of the spike playgrounds basically where there are just tons of spikes to dance through you're going flawlessly and you don't want to die to anything so you want to take all of the safest paths so definitely recommend taking a look at that map don't try to just remember just make sure you look at the map it will tell you where all of the dangerous areas actually are to go so it helps out a ton and make sure you are not running stompies stompies are actually a disadvantage here they give you too much of a boost on your jump for small ledges and stuff like that so you might actually fall off of a ledge because of, because of stompies so it actually puts you at a very bad disadvantage 
this advantage and I've had times where I have to restart this entire thing because of stompies because I ended up over jumping something and ended up dying so definitely recommend just sticking with your six coyote and just keep jumping around with that because it is a much smaller more precise jump and I definitely recommend just sticking with a more precise jump than a longer higher uh, more agility jump so definitely recommend sticking with that type of build and that will make sure your encounter flows like water so now on to encounter five this is going to be the boss fight zolmac so for zolmac we're going to be using the mountaintop recluse anarchy we're going to be switching up our build just a little bit here because the anarchy is going to help us out a ton inside of the arena if you don't have anarchy then i do recommend using prospector uh this is going to help out a ton too so make sure you use a grenade launcher or anarchy anarchy is just going to save you a ton of you know sweat and a ton of you know cursed thrall trying to kill you so it's definitely going to help you out a ton but if you don't have access to that then make sure you do use prospector or a another high hitting spike grenade launcher and then we are going to be using our mountain top this is going to help us kill a lot of those sword bears from a good distance without having you know give up our exotic slot for a sniper like it is an Aegis burden so we're going to be using this as our loadout going into the boss fight and to make sure you do plan a raid banner because we want to make sure we have our full super and our super is going to be a huge factor inside of this boss fight and it's going to be putting out tons and tons of damage so starting off encounter five first thing we're going to want to do is take out the knight over to the left and proceed to pick up his relic and head over to the shrieker tower from here we're going to want to clear out the shrieker and clear out all of the ads at the tower take it very very slow because this is the end and you can't get excited take it very slow and from here we're going to want to dunk our first orb before we dunk any of the orbs we want to make sure we always are invisible just to avoid any unnecessary deaths so as we're dunking orb one we want to make sure we have a cloak bomb on us and make sure we go invis so we dunk orb one and then from here we want to proceed to dunk orb two from orb two we're going to retreat back to the shrieker tower where it is safe and we are going to clear out some ads and we are going to make sure we obtain another sword this other sword is going to be necessary even though we can uh just orb duplicate we are going to want to clear out the wizard tower because the wizard always has a line of sight on the arena as you're trying to dps zolmec so now that we have taken down the wizard we want to obtain its orb and head over to the dunk for orb three so we want to make sure we are cloaked and make sure we are out of the line of sight of orb three so try to dunk kind of far, far away from it because zolmec is going to launch over a chain kind of like how scorpion does in mortal Kombat. it's going to shoot over a fire chain at you and try to hit you with that and it does a lot of damage so you want to make sure you are out of the way of this so once you have dunked the last orb but now it is time to start the encounter they're going to be tons of cursed thrall running into the arena so you want to make sure that if you do have anarchy you make sure you avoid and just kind of block off any of the entrances into the arena with your anarchy shot so i made webs all around the arena so that any cursed thrall that would enter would actually just be instantly killed and then from here once you do feel safe and that the arena is kind of clear of ads ads are going to spawn for about 10 seconds as soon as you are in the dps phase and then once you do clear those ads out it is going to be a pretty safe uh arena to you know kind of dance around in and then from here you're going to want to use your super the bottom tree night stalker does so much damage since the patch so it does a ton of dps we are going to be using our super on zolmac and getting as many tether shots as we can off each tether shot does around 30,000 damage so it does a hefty amount of damage to him so we want to get at least three to four tether shots off to add that extra damage on top of our anarchy don't use any of your mountaintop to actually shoot at him because anarchy is just going to be our go to weapon and there's going to be tons of heavy ammo dropping around the arena for this encounter just for some reason there's just tons of heavy ammo each time i went into it there's always heavy ammo to grab so you're going to be using your anarchy like a primary to dps so this is the primary strategy to go with to actually take down zolmec so doing this and playing it very safe you can get around a quarter of its health down each time so you can get this done in around four phases so it is a very very feasible strategy especially for when you're going flawless you want it to just be perfect and make sure you have no unnecessary deaths so hopefully at this point you have killed zolmec and you've earned yourself the solo flawless emblem and you are repping that and you have joined the under one percent club so if you have welcome and that you have completed the pit of heresy dungeon now it's time to either help your friends or you know just gloat around with the brand new emblem but if you guys did enjoy this destiny 2 video please be sure to let me know by slamming that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for more and i've been
been your boy T Glizzy. Goodbye, my awesome viewers, and I'll see you guys in another. Peace.